Hello again, it's Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard and you are looking at a plastic picnic plate that I poured something through the other day and the residual made that, which is pretty cool. And I want to use that. Unfortunately, I can't use all of it, or I would, because there's lettering that came out on the bottom half. So what I'm thinking about is taking off the part of it with the lettering very carefully and I might save that for something and then I'm going to leave that last ray on there and just well I'm not going to discard it I was going to say I was going to discard it but I'll save that just for all in just for for grins <laughs> you know the other half of that statement so let's uh, let's put this someplace that I can find it and get rid of the extra things here for a minute. This is a 12 by 16 inch canvas and my intention is to choose where that wants to go. And I think it wants to go down low and put a nice sky in or put a landmass in. I don't know. You're going to have to help me decide. Sorry for bumping the camera. Um, Gosh, I don't know. I guess I'll make up my mind in a second. So what I'm going to start out by doing is giving myself a land mass because whatever I start with, I'm going to have to spread that around some. And I'm going to keep using that some dioxidine purple and that's just a craft paint, probably a metallic green. And this is a bronze from Sargent's. And I'm going to sort of make up my mind as I go. Don't ask me why I put orange in there. I like I liked this landscape I did recently the other day that had orange in it. And sometimes the sur more surreal the colors, the happier it makes me. This is a Prussian blue. I'm just looking for a good sized puddle of paint to begin with. With all the colors that I like in there. And probably a few I'm used to using that are good colors. And just make it a puddle of paint. Just right out of the gate, puddle of paint. <laughs> Not trying to be a poet. I am looking for the black. And usually I use an Anita's black because it's very gray. A Anita's black metallic. Let me let me be clear. So I'm going to see how far this will go. And I grab myself an edge catcher, which is nothing more than uh, a plastic sheet salvaged from some packaging of 16 by 20 inch canvases. And I'm going to just let all that go. And if it seems like it's not going to go far enough, I'm going to add some more paint to it. And no matter what I do, it's going to kind of compete with that sun. So I'm definitely looking forward to figuring out what I'm going to do with the sky area. I'm liking all this weirdness, though. This is great weirdness. <laughs> I love it. Whatever happens to wind up on my edge catcher will uh, quite naturally get scooped off with my, where is it? An OXO omelet turning spatula. Best paint scraping, best paint spreading spatula around. So I'm just going to keep spreading my patterns. Before I ever get to an edge, I'm going to make sure I have as much spreading done as I can possibly do. Because then I'll tip the canvas all the way down. The more spread out my bottom is, the less likely it is to move as far when I finally get to putting in my sky colors. And that is my plan. So let's do that right now. Let's let it all go down, hopefully. And after it goes down, I usually throw it back up in. And I can do that, and I may. A little more paint probably would have been okay. I'm going to rock the edge of my edge catcher, which also forces that bead of paint along. And then I can force it back up again. And while I'm right here, I might as well take whatever's flowing and put it on the wet paint on that edge catcher and do the same thing on this end. And whatever paint I don't want to go back into the painting will stay on the edge catcher. I'll cover my edge, force that back in again, send it down to the other side, change up the patterns a little bit. I can definitely use 
Well, you know what? I, I really want to just take that off of there right now and put it on the other end before it gets any more mucky. It's not really mucky, though. It's definitely multicolored. Bronzy. There is some actual bronze in there this time, unusually so. I'm going to check my edges. I may attempt to flow the rest of that paint up toward the top a little bit. Definitely going to use what's on my spatula to cover the sides and my finger. I don't mind that orange. It's probably going to look like a reflection from the sun. I really don't mind the brownish color either. I say that now. <laughs> we'll see how I feel about it in a minute. And if I had put, if I had started by instead of making a puddle and put this into a dustpan or a shovel and poured it across, it would probably be a little different. I think what I'm going to do is use the fact that there's paint down here now to send what I've got over to that side and reap the benefit of tilting because my patterns are going to change and I'm going to probably lose most of that paint, which is really kind of okay with me at the moment because it wasn't really floating my boat as much as I'd like it to. I can force it back over again and utilize that paint flowing up and over the edge. Not entirely sure what I'm going to do with that sky right now, but uh, getting rid of that green spot would probably be a great start. I'm going to use my little sponge really quickly while I see it, and I'm going to wet my studio rag, which is nothing more than uh, sweatshirt material or sweat pant material. So long as you have a rag, then you're in a better position to wipe off a spatula if that's what you want to do. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar puddle, but I'm going to do it up high in the middle. And I'm probably going to try and swipe some of it. I need it to be a little subtle or I'm going to lose all of my sun color to the complications. So let's start by, this is, yes, another experiment. Let's go this way. Because we can. That's the name of my first book on the Amazon link, under Show More. I'm kind of suspect, I kind of suspect if I leave the paint heavy that I'll be happier by far with it as the glue to hold that sun down. Also I won't have as much chance of having the edges be naked like this up at the top which I can always scrape my spatula off on. I'm going to take any paint that's not polluted by other paint and put it down below here. Now I kind of always like a little white along my horizon line or or a dark blue edge. So I'm going to let all that run a little bit. The paint at the bottom isn't moving much and if I wanted it to move even slower at the bottom I would probably use the torch right now which probably wouldn't hurt at all because it might release some colors or some patterns shall we say. So I need to decide right now what's going to go down here. And I'm really thinking that it would be okay to use my Anita's White Metallic. And I could probably blow this into place somewhat anyway with a straw. So that's what I'll start by doing. That and looking around and seeing if my glasses... Oh, they're on my head. Cool. <laughs> Perfect, in fact. Rather than tipping yet, I'm not really ready. I can also nudge things a little bit. Where's a, where's a spatula? My Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatulas, as well as the OXO Omelet Turning spatulas, are on the Amazon link, the first blue link under Show More, under the video. And now, wish me luck. 
that I don't pollute it. I'm going to try and add my sun. Actually, I think I'm going to look at this for a second and make sure that I'm going to be happy with it. I kind of want a little bit, because once that sun's in there, it's pretty much a done deal. I got some pretty cells in my sky. That's the same magenta that I use for uh, a cell activator. I'm just tapping over the edges, trying to keep that from being not cohesive. And here goes nothing. Maybe I should show that to you first. Maybe I should torch a little bit too. Torch the bottom. We got great cells coming up in the bottom and I didn't really use any enamel paints, which is usually my MO to put in the bottom combinations. I just, we just emptied another dog food bag and that's what this white sheet of plastic is. It's the inside of a dog food bag. All right. That sun is going to get, oh boy, <laughs> here goes nothing, wow, let me move that down, let's grab a little bit of the paint, you can tell I'm a little nervous about this, a little bit of paint on my dog food bag that isn't polluted, so I don't waste it, cover that top edge just perfectly, yeah, I better get this right the first time going in. It's a breezy day. It's a dangerous endeavor. Please work. <laughs> I'm so nervous. So far not so good. Uh, tweezers. Without any big flaps of paint on them. It's probably in the way of everything. I can always use the same color that I used. Oh, I left a few letters in there. No. I can always use that same color down below. I don't think I mind if there was a cloud in front of the sun, so that's okay. I just need this to lie down. Please, no wrinkles. Better than I thought it was going to be for a minute, for sure. So the white ring around the outside is, oh my god, sorry about that. Wow, I was right in there, in your face. Well, I've been gently pushing down whatever I can, and I'm going to continue to do that, trying not to engage any more wet paint than I have to. That was trepidatious at best. I'm going to try and use my tweezers to adjust this over here. No, I guess I'm not. So that needs to be straightened down a little bit. And like I was saying before I so rudely interrupted everything with my head, this is a, a the circle around the outside edge is a neat as white metallic so I can always touch that up and I may wind up doing that. And if I had Q-tips, like I kept telling myself I should bring out here, I could probably touch that up, clean that off right now. But let's see what it looks like I've been showing you guys. So I think what's going to happen is that I'm going to move some of that paint right up. And then grab some of the paint that will dry a very similar, if not identical, color. And we're going to have to hope for the best. 
it's a risky experiment for sure. And I guess only time will tell if tomorrow it turns out to be worth my endeavor. I kind of want some blue right along that line, and I'm not sure why. But I want it. I think I'm going to just put a skewer right down in there and pull it across and not worry about it too much. I wanted this has been sitting around for a few days and I've wanted to do it for a while now. Now I can put a little bit more of that blue right in here and make everything a lot more cohesive. I think, unless I make green. I'm really worried my head is in the way the whole time. I've got to find a different way to have... Whoops. Yeah, that was probably kind of cool down there. So, I hope you guys forgive me. <laughs> and I'm not sure about how that... turned out at the bottom, but I think I'm going to give it a dose all the way to the top. So that's two minutes for me to tell you guys I do sell my artwork. And finish blowing my sun into place, which is hopefully all right. will be if I have anything to say with it. So um, I do sell my artwork. I do give classes at the house in Spring Hill, Florida, and I'm looking forward to the cure for the coronavirus, enabling the people who made reservations and couldn't make it so far come in, come in when they want to, because they still want to come, but traveling is a little bit trepidatious right now. So if you happen to be in Spring Hill, definitely come and visit me. It's a private lesson, so there haven't been a lot of people here. <laughs> Your danger level is very slim and none. We are very healthy here. Check Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Groups for students on Facebook if you are looking for a fluid art slash Expressionist Art Studio. That is so crooked right there that I just need to fix it. I'm sure somebody in the audience besides me was like, you've got to fix that. Yeah, Q-tips, good idea. But um, that's kind of fun, and uh, if I want to put some more colors in my sky tomorrow, I could. If I wanted to do that right now, I also could. Big pink cloud. You're going to be gone in a minute. Check my uh, community board for tomorrow's videos. Check my playlist for 1,200 videos organized. I think some pink in there, or some purple too. All right, this is Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio Gallery saying there's a drawing on the end screens on the, on the exhibition video. So if you'd like to help the studio continue to, to be on YouTube or, uh, or for any reason at all, uh, it's a $10 minimum to join and there's 15 paintings up for grabs. The winner will get to choose three of them. I love you guys. I will see you anon. Make sure that you check your notifications and look under the video at Teespring Clothing. Remember that Amazon link is at no added cost to you and it helps me when you shop there. There, I'm happier now with that by far. I needed that big pink streak. I love you guys. I'll see you anon. Bye for now. Priscilla out or whenever the camera stops rolling. I'm, you know me, I'm just going to play with it until I get it the way I want it anyway. One last torch.